Okay, well, we've, we've run around the lake a couple times. Um, tr I've went and fished a couple main body creeks. I've fished the main river. You know, the, I guess from when the lake was way down during the drought and when it flooded, basically it just washed out all the old bushes. So it was really hard to find, you know, structure in the river. And, and it seems like in these creeks, the fish aren't there yet. I mean, we got water temps in the upper 70s. So it really hasn't started transitioning into fall yet. And uh, there's tons of little bait and as well as baby bass, you know, up around the bushes. But the bushes only come out to like three or four foot of water. So the rest of it's just kind of bare bank. So what we're going to do is, you know, I rigged up a drop shot, you know, something I wasn't planning on doing, but we got to make do with what we got. And I'm going to try to come out here on the, some of these main body points and walls and spot fish on my electronics and drop on them. One of the new baits that I just received this past week is the Jackal clone fry and the super crosstail shad. These baits, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna catch them this year on this, you know, as, as well as in the future. It mimics a shad perfectly. You know, they got different colors. Um, you know, this one here is what, I, what I'm fishing. It's basically a silver shad. And, you know, just after looking at the bait fish in this lake, they got this little light, lightish green back, you know, a lot of silver in them. Uh, you know, if I was fishing a little bit stained water, this here's a, thread fitting shad and basically it's white you know a little chartreuse on there but they just have the profile and the same size of the bait fish that are in most of our bodies of water you know th this is the clone fry and the difference is so we got a clone fry and we got a super crosstail shad the clone fry has a little fork tail on it the cro super crosstail shad i mean it's it's so super soft, it's much softer than the clone fry, but they both work excellent, you know, and the way I like to rig it is just on a nose hook, you know, like I said, I'm going to be fishing open water, and what that thing does, it floats, and I mean, it looks like a little Diane Shad or even a Live Shad down there. Um, I rig it, I'm going to start off with like a 12, 13 inch leader, and I got an EcoPro tungsten drop shot weight on there, and uh, I'm just going to go down the bank, you know, kind of stay off, go in and out, and find where these fish are suspended at, and I know we'll catch them because we got these new baits. You know, a lot of times when I'm drop shotting this time of year, late summer, you know, like we're doing here, and uh, the water temp is high, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough situation to catch fish in because of all the bait. You know, the bait is on the surface, um, so you can either catch them one of two ways. The first way, which, I mean, I usually can catch them like this, but it's been really difficult to find them is by watching your graph. You know, when you're going along these banks or points or bluffs, you'll see them either suspended, you know, 10 to 15, 20 feet up off the bottom. And you can drop, you know, straight down on them. And the, the key is when you do that is, first of all, you have, you have to have good electronics to pick up those fish. Uh, but you drop straight down on them, you reel up to them, and what you want is you want your, your weight actually in front of the fish instead of the bait eye level with the fish because the bass's eyes are on the top of their head so they're naturally always looking up. Um, you know some guys will count it up you know real whatever 20 turns um, you know depends where the fish is at on your electronics. Uh, a lot of times I mean you catch some real good ones and you know on a tough bite that's the way you can catch them. The second style which you know it, it's kind of like just bank fishing um, if you got a row of brush or you know some baseball rock banks or some stumps logs whatever up on the bank just staying off of it, especially in clear water situations, staying off of it and just, you know, making long casts with a drop shot. Um, you know, I generally, you know, I'll, I'll work it pretty much all the way out to the boat. Um, you know, sh shake it, let it pause, shake it, let it pause. Uh, you know, on a tough bite, that'll get you, that'll get you some bass. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm you know, experiment with the drop shot out here. Uh, I just want to go over the gear I'm using real quick. This here is a Powell 732 spinning rod. And uh, I like it, you know, especially when I'm fishing open water. It's got a real soft tip so you can detect those bites. I'm throwing six pound 100% um, trialing fluorocarbon. And this here is the new Revo Premier spinning reel. It's got a real smooth drag, um, you know, extremely light. It's got everything you need for doing this type of fishing. Um, I'm using a number two Gamagatsu nose hook. It's just a little tiny, you know, that's the hook I use when I'm, when I'm nose hooking a bait. Um, super sharp, you hardly ever lose them. The main, the key thing I can tell you about when you're fishing open water like this and you're dropping on fish, or even if you're, you know, casting towards a, towards a point or towards a brush or whatever, 
don't set the hook too hard. If you do that, you're, a lot of times you're going to pull that hook right out of there. It's little. A lot of times all you got to do is just start reeling and you got them. So um, I also mentioned, you know, earlier I was throwing this. This is a 3 Eco Pro True Tungsten or Eco Pro Tungsten uh, drop shot weight, and uh, you know, I mean, this is the proper gear to be to be fishing like this. So all available at Tackle Warehouse. Okay, well, we're gonna wrap up this day. Um, you know, I had high expectations coming up here. Uh, you know, previously the past couple of weeks the weather's been cooling off, and like I started out saying this morning, I really thought the fish were gonna be going into the creeks, but you know, today it was in the 90s up here. It wasn't a breath of wind. Um, so I, I really think, you know, after seeing the, the whole lake, I mean, basically there's shad from the end of the river all the way to the dam out in the middle of the lake. Um, it's hard to find even a fish to, to drop on, um, on the graph, you know, and, and up around the visible structure, it, it just doesn't come out in the water deep enough. You know, we tried fishing some really shallow stuff, no bites. Um, you know, overall though, you can't catch them every day. Um, you know, but it kind of motivates me to come back and, and give them a try next week or something like that, especially when the weather cools down. You know, this time of year, it can go from real poor to absolutely crazy fishing. So, um, you know, all the gear that we talked about during these vlogs available at Tackle Warehouse. We'll see you next time. Oh, yeah. Big one. Woo! Drop shot! Yeah. Drop shot. Clone fry. It's not what we want.